Every time we turn on the news these days, it seems like there's yet another politician accused of sexual misconduct. Judge Roy Moore, a Republican candidate for U.S. Senate in Alabama, is one of the most high-profile cases right now. Even here in Colorado, Democratic State Representative Steve Lebsock and Paul Rosenthal have both been removed from leadership roles because of accusations against them. So. Why are we hearing all of these accusations now and what will be the impact on society? Those are some of the questions Nicole Brady posed to a DU professor who studies political culture. Nancy Wadsworth is a political science professor at the University of Denver who focuses a lot on modern political culture. Thanks for joining us today, Nancy. Thanks for having me. Well, we, we've seen a lot of these accusations coming out against our own state lawmakers, a couple of them, national politicians, entertainers. Is this a problem in our culture, do you think, that's finally being exposed? Yes, I think it has uh, long been a problem in our culture. I think it's never not been a problem in our culture. What's different is the scale of the exposure. And um, new forums for victims, survivors to speak directly about their experience in an unmediated way, yeah. uh, which they haven't had in the past. There have been periods of time where women have come forward um, in light of a particularly visible public accusation um, against Clarence Thomas sure. or Bill Clinton in the 90s and lots of women talking about this happening to them on a regular basis or even last year. Um, but I think the scale of uh, women's speaking out is different and um, social media, the internet provide new yeah avenues for people to talk about it. That, that's absolutely true. Of course, someone can go on Twitter and that the Me Too hashtag certainly mm -hmm. was a big part of this. There seems to be, in some cases, new allegations against someone coming out almost every day mm -hmm. recently. Is there a danger of people being falsely accused or the media making too much of some things? How do we draw that line? I mean, uh, as with any type of crime, there's some danger of false accusations, though uh, from what I understand with sexual assault, sexual abuse cases, that is no more common than someone making a false accusation that they've been robbed or, mm. uh, or that, you know, some other kind of crime has been done to them, a milder forms of crime. Um, in most cases, victims, survivors are taking quite a great risk to come forward and it's more often um, they that will be accused of slander and accused of lying um, than found to be lying themselves. Um, yeah. So I think that there there is some risk of false accusation. Uh, it's no more common than with other crimes that and um, and I think there's more risk to the people who are coming forward more often. That's very interesting. You wrote an editorial a piece, an opinion piece on this recently, uh, talking about the, those who actually own up to what they've done and why that's important. Yeah, we saw the somewhat unusual case of comedian Louis C.K. Uh, in the wake of the New York Times report mm -hmm. about his past behavior. Um, acknowledging that behavior in no uncertain terms, mm -hmm. making no excuses or apologies for it, um, and conceding that he would take whatever hits to his career and his future were necessary for the public to kind of process this. And a lot of people criticize this as an imperfect statement. He doesn't directly issue an apology. Mm -hmm. But I argued in the Washington Post that there is nonetheless value to someone trying to come forward at a moment when perhaps the cultural consensus about this is shifting and I think he's signaling that he agrees with that consensus that this is something we have to do something about and uh, and I think we should recognize that there's some value in that because um, these kinds of rare admissions yeah, can rare. be ways that we talk about what's wrong, what do we expect from people who've been accused, what, how do we expect people to take responsibility, and what does that look like? Uh -huh. And even if it's imperfect, this can be a way for talking about that. It's interesting because so many of the accused will immediately issue just a, this is, com well, this is a complete lie. Yeah. Uh, and, and not even admit to any part of it. Yeah, blanket rejections. Mm -hmm. And I think we've seen far more of that than mm -hmm. we've seen any kind of admissions. And usually admissions are, are coming along with some kind of excuse. So in Kevin Spacey's case, um, he made some excuses yeah. for his behavior and said he was going to get treatment. And so mitigating circumstances arguments. And 
Um, I think when someone comes clean, we should re recognize that as having some value. So in the case of uh, one of our own Republic, uh, I'm sorry, Democratic lawmakers here in Colorado, yeah. uh, Representative Steve Lebsock in our uh, state legislature, we saw him issue an apology uh, of, of some sorts. sorts. Of sorts, uh -huh. exactly. Um, so, so there's some acknowledgement there. Is it enough? And, and does a politician, is there any way for them to come back from something like this after this? Well, I think we've seen many, many examples of politicians and celebrities um, accused of sexual abuse coming back and yeah. not being hurt at all. And uh, from the current U.S. president on down. Um, so I don't, I, I think historically people have been able to bounce back quite well or ne never even have their, uh, their careers really nicked. Uh, Woody Allen comes to mind. Um, but I think we, the, the consensus may be changing about yeah. how easy that is and how ready the public is to kind of readmit people. Uh, I think when people issue a sort of half apology, I'm sorry that some people were upset by me, my behavior. I'm sorry I was, I did not mean to hurt people where there's a sort of half concession that mm -hmm. I may have done wrong, but in other people's eyes, not in my own eyes. I think generally the American public, that doesn't set, sit well with folks. It doesn't, it sounds like a hedged uh, statement that is ultimately still protecting the person accused. Uh, Nancy Wadsworth from DU, thank you so much thanks. for joining us today thanks to so talk much for about having this. Me. Anne? Thanks, Nicole. When we come back, I'm chatting with DA George Brockler about dropping out of the governor's race and running for attorney general.